Since I've come all the way to another country, I should probably spend some time exploring, shouldn't I? I left the hostel and took off down a street, unsure of where I was going, but not really caring. I did this often when I lived in New York. Just wander. Usually I found an interesting shop, or at least ended up with a story to tell. Now though, I felt completely confused. The streets of London were both very different and not different at all. The air was thinner and it felt better to breathe. When I signed up for this program, I was warned that most Americans would get sick in the first two weeks of living in London because of the air pollution. The London smog. Coming from New York City, though, it didn't bother me a bit. I kept noticing the architecture. The older style of buildings reminded me so much of home, but these buildings were cleaner and clearly older. The walkways were broad and clear, and in the business districts, giant plazas filled with people in business suits and sharp English accents. Everything was so similar, but so different. I felt like I was walking through plastic, not really connected to anything I was seeing. In no time, I felt exhausted. I hadn't walked too far, but maybe the stimulation was too much. Or maybe I was still jet-lagged. I collapsed into a cafe seat near a park. Hopefully the owner wouldn't mind too much that I was mooching. They probably got people like me all the time, so I hope they were used to it. As I rode my sore neck, something caught my eye. A young Asian woman with short black hair and thick rimmed glasses stood over a canvas, muttering under her breath. At least, I think it was supposed to be under her breath, but I could hear her from here. Supposed to capture the light if it keeps moving. I didn't think it would be so. She seemed frustrated about her painting. I tilted my head a bit to catch more of a glimpse of what she was working on. It was a stylized landscape of the park. I think. I told him I had the other way. No, it was a realistic watercolor, wasn't it? What was she trying to do? Curious, I got up and sidled over to her, hoping I didn't seem too creepy. Didn't make any better sense from this angle, but from the looks of the woman, she was an artist. She had that whole bohemian thing that suggested that for her. It was all about the flow of things, man. I glanced at her again and accidentally made eye contact. What do you think? I, uh... I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. I just wanted a better look. I was curious. What do you think? It looks... good? I'm a little... What are you trying for here? I wanted to capture the landscape as I see it. What does that mean? From your perspective, or...? Well, yes, from my perspective. Not point of view, not specific location. Well, I mean, yes, a specific location, but also my perspective. Uh, okay. She had a foreign accent of some sort, but that wasn't the reason that I found her words a bit hard to follow. Actually, there was something familiar about her voice, but I couldn't quite... What do you feel when you look at this? Confused, but I would never actually tell her that. Um, it seems a little morose and a little... Maybe do you have a lot on your mind? It seems like you're looking for something but not really finding it. That's how I'd put it, I think. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to insult you. You didn't insult me. Her tone of voice suggested otherwise, though. She was silent for a bit as I continued to feign interest in her canvas. At this point, the conversation was awkward. I wanted out of these as soon as possible, but couldn't really think of a way to get going. I wanted out of there, rather. What should I do? This is why I never talk to strangers. It's cool. I looked up, startled. I mean, not everybody gets art, you know. Everybody's got their own place. We all got our own paths, man. I nodded slowly. Her demeanor seemed to have changed, but I didn't quite know how to feel about it. I'm Jihyo, by the way. If you couldn't tell, I'm not from around here. Ah, she's Korean. That's why her voice reminded me a little of Jinsu. I'm Flynn. Me neither. I'm from New York and staying in a hostel a few blocks away. Are you? I am too. Mine's called The One. It's decent enough. It does what I need it to do. Wait, the one? But that's where I'm staying. Is it? Why haven't I seen you around? 
I've been there for a few days already and I haven't seen you eating with us. Oh, I just... I've been busy sketching and trying to scout the perfect location. You know, art never sleeps. When I get that drive, I just have to go out and start painting. How long have you been doing art? Uh... It's hard for me to figure that out. A long time, as long as I can remember. Off and on, I guess. I didn't start seriously pursuing it until... until a few years ago. That's pretty cool. Yeah, man. Cool. Super cool, yo. There it was again. What was that weird tone? Anyways, I'm gonna be heading back now. The, uh, the lighting shifted, so I might as well just go work on it at the hostel. Let me come with you. Sure. If you say so. I watched her pack up her massive array of paints, brushes, easel, and canvas into a black bag nearly as big as she was. The only time I'd ever seen people with bags like those was in the movie, so I was kind of surprised. The hostel was only a few blocks away, so we made it in a little under five minutes, making fairly polite conversation. Well, it was nice to meet you, Flynn. Maybe I'll see you around some more. She left before I could think of something better to say than, Yeah! As I headed for the bathroom, I realized how hard my heart was pounding. I just sustained an entire conversation with a stranger in London, and even made a new friend. What a good day! Heck yeah, killing it, Flynn. The nice thing about living in the hostel was that, despite the thin walls, it was often perfectly silent. People were often working or at school, so it was easy to find peace and quiet. It was quiet enough to hear the birds outside my window, the wind howling through the cracks in the wood. Quiet enough to hear footsteps in the hallway. Rapid, heavy footsteps like someone was on a mission. A relentless pounding beat at my door, and in the time it took me to stand up from my desk and cross the room, it grew several decibels louder. I pulled open the door to find Peggy on the other end, eyes electric. Flynn! I need your help! Sign my petition, please! Um... What? See, our uni is far, far behind the times as far as the green movement goes. You'd think that a place of intellectualism and education would be concerned about the future of the world, the future of its very patrons, but no! No, it is left to those of us with common sense, desire, and passion to find a way to get our world out of this ridiculous predicament it's in. Our way of life is totally unsustainable! There's no way we'll be living like we do now in 30 years. Right now, we are pumping out cheap clothes just to throw them away in a year. We are stripping the soil of nutrients to grow food that we mostly waste. If we go on like this, nothing will grow, and the sea rise will drown the coastlines and we'll all have to eat nothing but insects. And you can bet your bollocks will be sorry that nobody invested in clean energy and we ended up running out of fossil fuels. She started speaking faster and faster, and I simply tuned her out, instead watching the dynamic expressions on her face. She didn't seem to have any idea what she looked like when she spoke, her eyes getting wider and smaller, her mouth flying this way and that, the occasional chunk of spit flying from her mouth. <laughs> well, this is all new inner thoughts. Molly, I didn't notice the chunks of spit. Finally, instead of gesturing dramatically at the wall, she began to make eye contact with me again, and I tuned back in. Even the smallest of actions, if made in a concerted effort by multiple individuals on a daily basis, should be able to help. It's easy to say it won't make a bloody dent, but that's a load of rubbish. If everyone who said something like that did what they were complaining about, even if they just got off their asses and voted for change, the world would end up being a much better place. So, will you sign my petition? Uh, I got a bit lost in the middle there. What's the petition for? I want the university to commit to using more renewable energy sources. London completely ignores solar power because of cramped roof spaces and poor weather. But we have big buildings and we can make it work. Ah, all that information just for a solar panel petition? Please, please, please sign it! I know you are the kind of person who believes in changing the future. 
nobody else has signed it, so... She looks so sad saying it that I couldn't help but take pity on her. Sure, I'll sign. Yes, get in! The way she was dancing around and punching the air, you'd think she had entered a gladiatorial arena and managed to make it out alive. Do you think you might do me another favor? That depends a bit on the favor. Would you help me get signatures from everyone here? For some reason, I can't seem to sit anyone down long enough to talk to them. Oh, I knew the reason. I didn't want to bother anybody with this kind of thing. They definitely wouldn't like it. But it would make Peggy happy if I did. Interesting. This is like the most difference in dialogue we've gotten so far. Well, like inner dialogue. But sorry, Peggy, I'm not on your route. Ah, oh, I have something to study for, so if you don't mind. Oh, yeah, that's okay. I understand. It was like I smacked a puppy dead in the face. Well, I'll... I'll see you around then. I'll find people to sign this no matter what. And her fire was back. I watched her stomp off down the hall, then return to my room with a grateful sigh. Oh. Dang. <laughs> Flynn has no mercy for Peggy. The university library was a little less friendly than the ones I'd usually seen in America. Back home, even high school students could visit a campus library to take notes and check references, although they'd need special permission to check anything out. I had done papers for history class that way. Here, the whole library was behind a security gate that needed a university ID card to get through. There were multiple lanes of in-out traffic, like on the underground, but it could still make an awful bottleneck at a busy time of day. I had vaguely heard about a scandal where a guy stole rare old books from a British library to sell at an online auction. Maybe that was why they were so tight on security. Hmm. Didn't Mark say he hung out here a lot? Maybe I should try to find him. Which sections should I look in? Okay, he's in philosophy. I think... Danny's biology? Yeah. I looked around the biology section and spotted Danny sitting at a table. He looked really busy with his studies, though. Better not bother him. I should just find my own books and go. I could have said hello. Ah, back to work. Flynn, looks like you're serving table five. Brendan pointed to the largest table in the bar filled with ten loud and clearly obnoxious teenagers. Have fun. I glared at him and he laughed. <laughs> what did I ever do to him? Him getting in trouble was his own damn fault. Oh well. Someone had to do it after all. I mean, you could have had Aussie be your enemy. She's a little- she's a lot more creative. As I entered the hostel common room, I spotted Jihyo inside. She had told me she was living here, but it was the first time I'd actually run into her here, so to speak. I might have expected an artist to relax on one of the colorful bean bags, but she was perched on the sofa, leaning forwards like a student trying to memorize the notes on a board. Coming closer, I realized she had a sketch pad in her lap. She must have been working on something. Um, is it alright if I watch TV? What? Sorry to disturb you. I'm not disturbed. No, not disturbed. So, do you mind if I turn the TV on then? It's fine. I took a seat, not too close, and turned on the set, though I kept the sound low. I snuck a peek or two at Jihyo just to be sure I wasn't bothering her, but her attention seemed completely focused on the paper in front of her. She must be good at tuning out the rest of the world. Thinking that, I relaxed and watched my show. BBC programs didn't have commercial breaks exactly, but they did run a few promotions for other shows between time slots. I leaned back and yawned, and caught Jihyo staring right at me. What? What? Did I do something strange? No, I... Sometimes I stare into space when I'm thinking. Oh, I've done that. I didn't mean to make her feel awkward. So, um, what are you working on? 
A study. Something you're studying for class? No, a study. A preparation, planning for a painting. Oh, I see. What are you going to paint? I don't know. She stood up. Like, the ideas just come to me, you know? You dig? Uh, right? You can't control where the inspiration goes, yo. <laughs> Sorry. She picked up her sketch pad and left the room. I hoped I hadn't upset her, but I found her a bit hard to understand. I get her a little bit more now. <laughs> I was resting in the living room after a long day of work, hand over my eyes, when I heard a heavy sigh and someone plopped on the, onto the cushion next to me. Oh, work is horrible, isn't it? I lifted my hand. Halsey was next to me, a weary smile on her face. Yeah, that's probably why it's called work. Not much we can do about it. Dang, so aggro. Have you always had such thick eyebrows, Flynn? Or am I only noticing it now? I didn't feel much like talking and thought my reply would ward her off, but instead she giggled. <laughs> you must be quite disciplined with an attitude like that. I should learn from you, but I'm too impatient. I nodded, unsure of what to say in response. How was your work day? Brendan giving you a hard time? I glanced at her in surprise. Had Ashley told her? I tried to keep it quiet, since I didn't want to start trouble in the hostel. There were enough of us that a little bit of friction could set a fire ablaze. Oh, I know Brendan pretty well. Plus, it doesn't take a brain surgeon to put two and two together. As soon as I saw the looks he was giving you, I knew you were on his list. Is this a common thing? I wouldn't say common. It's not easy to make Brendan feel insecure, but somehow you've managed to do it. Wait, insecure? I thought he was mad because I almost cost him his job. No, he almost cost him his job. He knows that just as much as you do. But it bothers him to see how easily people here have taken to you. You're not best friends with everyone, but they're comfortable around you. It's not the case for him, abrasive as he can be. Oh. I didn't think about it that way. He's not a bad guy, he's just kind of a twat. Don't let him get to you. And if you ever want to talk about it, you can always vent to me. My lips are sealed. Well... Thank you, Aussie. To be honest, it was weighing on me. I didn't want to tell anyone, but dealing with it every day in silence was getting rough. I figured. Everyone needs someone they can talk to. Someone they can rely on, you know? I hope I can be that person for you. Thank you. And if you ever need to talk, I'm here for you too. Thanks, Flynn. Honestly, you're so sweet. It's no wonder everyone likes you. It's hard to find guys who are genuinely nice, without wanting anything from you, if you know what I mean. I'm glad you came to this hostel. I needed to meet someone like you. I'm glad I could help, Aussie. Anyways, I'm going to relax. I'll see you around, Flynn. I hope so. I watched Aussie get up and leave the room, her hips gently swaying. My first impression of Aussie was that she was just a shallow party girl. What with the giant earrings, the style of her makeup, her clothes, and the way she held herself. But maybe I was wrong? Or maybe that wasn't everything there was to her. She seemed to be a genuinely nice person. Mm -mm. Also, you had to admit, she was hot as hell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She was completely out of my league. A girl like that usually went for successful athletes or movie stars. But I wouldn't mind spending more time with her. After all, you never know. Mm -mm. <laughs> Aussie, I will say, like, she is much more smooth than Brendan was. Like, Brendan gave me bad vibes from the beginning, but I think if I had started with the male MC instead of the, the female one, I might have been fooled by Aussie a little bit. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. Peggy, Danny, Angelo, and I were all eating lunch in the dining room when James looked through the doorway. You four. 
The front garden is a mess. You're just gonna leave it like that. Pardon? I hadn't seen a garden anywhere around here. It took me a moment to work out that he meant the yard. That's not our responsibility, is it now? Yes, it is now. I want it clean by tonight or I'm throwing you out of your rooms. With that he left. He can't be serious. He's not serious, right? You all haven't been here as long as I have. This is my second year. I'm sad to say he's done much worse. So immediately after eating, we discarded our plans for the day and went to the front yard. Despite the fact that it was the middle of winter, scraggly weeds were visibly growing over the flower beds and clumping up here and there in the grass. I stared at them, unsure of what to do. I didn't really have a yard back in New York. Danny shrugged, got down on his knees, and started pulling plants out of the ground. After a second, the other two went to different areas of the lawn and followed suit. I wasn't really confident enough to do it on my own. Who should I join? Danny. I kneeled down next to Danny and grabbed the first plant I saw. Whoa, whoa, not that one. That's a flower on the way, see? He grabbed the stalk of the plant and lowered it towards me. Tiny white bulbs clung to its ends. Oh, I'm sorry. You're fine. Here, come take my place. I'll find other ones. I shifted into his position, brushing against his arm as I did so. Holy Danny, you're ripped. Ha, huh, of course I am. You can't do sports all day without getting a bit of muscle, right? You're smart, fit, cute, and reliable. Come on, there must be something wrong with you. I love the wink. <laughs> Flynn's wink is great. I grinned, but Danny's smile faltered. Um, I'm sorry, I... Oh, there's plenty wrong with me. No worries. But really, we should be waiting. Let's go. There was a note of finality to what he said, so I nodded and got to work. Hours later, we sat exhausted on the front walkway, wiping sweat from our brows. James came around the front, sipping from an orange drink in his hand. He glanced around the yard and nodded. It'll do. The alcohol in his breath almost stung my eyes. He jerked his head and we moved out of his way so he could get into the hostel. I hate that guy. Somehow, as a collective, we sighed. Oh. <sighs> You're not the only one. I came into the kitchen slightly late that evening, planning to just grab a quick sandwich or something before bed. The air was filled with the scent of tomatoes and spices. It reminded me of the time a family in my apartment building back home had made spaghetti and you could smell it all the way down the hall. This is different. Except the apartment smell had only been marginally better than the school cafeteria, and this one was downright delicious. <gasps> Angie's cooking! Ah! With that in mind, it was only a slight surprise to see Angela was the one in the kitchen today, not Ashley. Hey, that smells amazing. What? Oh. I am not amazing. My mama, she is amazing. Well, you're still a way better chef than I'll ever be. If you never try to learn, that's a guarantee. But no fear. Someday you will have a wife to cook for you, yes? I don't know about that. Danny was right. He did have some strange views. And it didn't look likely that he was going to invite me to share his food. <laughs> At least he was friendly enough to sit with me while I ate my sandwich, but it seemed pretty pathetic in comparison. I really needed to learn to cook. Cause I ain't getting a wife no how. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's so neat to see Angie actually cooking. Oh, what a rough day. I was in the pub that evening, rolling out my neck and musing over how surprisingly difficult it was spending so much time with Brendan in close quarters. Normally, my own workplace wouldn't be much fun to hang out in, but Brendan had already gone back to the hostel, so if I went there, I might run into him again. 
That guy is going to be the end of me, I just know it. A glass was set down by my elbow. I looked up to see a smiling Ashley. A white Russian on the house. Sweet. I keep forgetting I'm allowed to drink here. What's in this? Is it really alcoholic? Vodka, coffee liqueur, and cream. Just make sure to go slowly on it, okay? I don't know what your tolerance is. It's not crazy high. I usually only drink beer or wine that other people have brought to parties. Then drink one and see how you feel. You might be able to have another. She glanced around and leaned in closer to me. But be careful, they're a bit pricey. Don't tell anyone I gave you this. You know, at some establishments, the staff aren't allowed to come to the bar as customers at all, to make sure they don't get special treatment. Um, should we be doing this? Oh, I'm sure it's fine. It's just this once, right? Right. With someone as nice as Ashley behind the bar, I can see how it would be easy to take advantage. I took a straw from a basket on the bar surface and stuck it in the drink. Ugh. Wow, this is delicious! Uh-huh. Ashley walked away looking horrified for some reason. <laughs> um, are you not supposed to have it with a straw? <laughs> the white Russian was cold and sweet and creamy. Essentially, it was candy, and I downed it in a few minutes. Hey, Ashley, can I get another? You're already done? Yeah, I am. I feel fine, so another one won't mess me up too bad. If you're sure. She went about preparing another, and as she did, I began to feel a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> Guess I was feeling it more than I thought. Ashley put the drink in front of me, and I handed her a ten-pound note. Keep the change. Cheese, thank you! No problem. Now, I have a question. I put the straw in the second cup and started drinking it too. It tasted slightly different though. Much sweeter. There was probably less alcohol in this one, which was probably for the best. Oh, Ashley, you're a doll. Still, it was enough to loosen my tongue. I want to know what happened with you and Brendan. Ashley froze. Oh god, I'm sorry, is it really that bad? I totally shouldn't have asked, I'm super sorry. No, no, it's fine. It wasn't anything that bad. I mean, it was. Well, I don't want to say that it was. Her eyes darted around the bar as if looking for some method of escape, but none presented them to her. Then again, there weren't many customers here at this time of day. I figured most people came around in the actual nighttime to drink, rather than getting drunk immediately after work like I was. Wait, that was kind of sad, wasn't it? Wait, was it? Did I have to rethink my life now? Huh. Well, I'm not really sure what went wrong. It happened kind of suddenly, at least for me. One day everything seemed to be going great, and we were closer than we'd ever been before, and the next he dumped me. I'm certain he's not a bad person, though. Not deep down, anyways. I guess it just didn't work out, that's all. She trailed off, staring intently into space. I sipped my drink carefully. I was nearly finished with this one, too, and I wanted to make sure I got all the deliciousness out of the cracks. After a few seconds, I realized she looked pretty upset. Hey, I'm sorry for bringing up bad memories. I was just curious, but I'm pretty sure it was a little shitty of me to ask. No, no. It's fine. Well, what do you think? Do you think people are inherently good? Uh... Um... Interesting. This is kind of like... The same... Like, a different lead-up to the question that we had with Malia when we were on her route. Like, we went shopping with her and we were talking about James. Um... And then Brendan. The subject of Brendan came up. Uh... Not completely, as I think the good answer for her um i'm just gonna save i just getting one thing with her is um not going 
to get us on her route by any means, but just in case. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone's got a heart. We just mess things up. Everybody wants peace and love, really. See? That's what I think. No one wants to be a bad person. I'm glad you agree. So, it must have been something I did. I just messed things up somehow. No, not you, girl. Was that really what I had meant to say? No. But you're definitely good. Definitely the best. I think you may have drunk that a little too fast. Let me get you some water. <laughs> okay. She set the glass of water on the bar top and then another customer called her away. I drank my water in a peaceful kind of buzz and watched as Ashley mistook orders and dropped a total of three plates over the next half hours. Between customers, she kept gazing into space, that same distraught expression on her face. Aw, oh, that's so sad. I wonder if we get, like, a much more different route with Ashley as the guy. It felt like something was wrong, but I couldn't really make sense of it. Eventually, I finished my drink and was ready to head back to my room. Ashley was such a nice girl. What really happened between her and Brendan? Nothing good, man.